Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of The Fire Brick Company and I am really excited uh, to be introducing our series on building our pre-cut brick oven kits. This has been something that we've been working on for a very long time uh, and we're just, we're just so excited to bring it to you. Uh, we really hope that you enjoy it. Uh, now, for those of you who are wanting to get a bit of an overview of how our wood-fired ovens go together, this video is gonna be perfect for you because we're gonna do an unboxing, showing you everything that's in the kit. Uh, and in doing so, we'll walk you through the process of how it goes together in a relatively short period of time. When we were sort of planning these videos, uh, we went back and forth on, do we make these videos really short and to the point um, and maybe miss out on some important detail? or do we maybe go into more detail and end up with some slightly longer videos? And after quite a bit of discussion, uh, we decided, you know what? Let's go full detail. Let's, let's give our customers as much detail as possible uh, so that they can get a really good understanding, that you can get a really good understanding of how our wood-fired ovens go together. Uh, so that you've got confidence before you even put in an order with us, you've got confidence that you're going to be able to put it together because you've already seen the whole process. Uh, so as a result, um, you're gonna find the series is uh, quite long. Um, and we've broken it up into smaller chunks for you and we put chapters inside uh, those chunks to make it more uh, manageable. But um, we really hope that you enjoy that, uh, that you enjoy the detail that we've gone into. Uh, it's not just the how, I've tried also to explain why uh, I've, I've done certain things and why we, we build the oven a certain way uh, so that uh, you get a really good understanding of how it all goes together. Uh, so please enjoy. Uh, if you have any questions, always remember, we're here to help. Jump on our website, give us a call, send us an email. Uh, we'll be really happy to answer any questions that you have. Now, depending on where you are, you're gonna receive a slightly different kit. If you are in Australia, you're gonna receive something like what you see to my left, uh, which is our D105 kit. Now that's on a very heavy duty timber pallet. It's been wrapped and strapped and it's ready to ship all over Australia. If you're outside Australia, if you're in America, Canada, Europe, New Zealand, wherever you are, you're gonna be getting something like this bad boy. Uh, which is a heavy duty timber crate. Uh, so it's actually designed to carry double what we put into it in terms of weight. Very, very strong uh, and designed to be shipped all over the world. Uh, so guys, if you are gonna be opening up one of these, you're gonna need yourself a hammer, um, probably a crowbar, something to get into it because we put an awful lot of nails into it. Uh, when, we, when we package it up, we really make sure that it is not coming open until you decide that you're absolutely ready to open it. Um, one thing I would like to say, when you take delivery of your kit, please make sure you check for any damage. Uh, we guarantee our kits all over the world, so if you do find you have an issue, maybe there's been an issue in transit, uh, and, and somehow there's been some damage done, we want to know. Uh, so if you notice any damage to the packaging on the outside, please take some photos of it, send them through to us, so that we can then follow that up with the transport company. But rest assured, if that does happen, we'll take care of you. We'll make sure you get all the replacement parts that you need. We're gonna unbox our D105 brick oven kit. Now, be aware, uh, we're not actually gonna go through the, the quantities of every single thing that you get. You can find the quantities for your particular kit, whether it's the D95, the 105, or the 130. Uh, you can find those quantities in the written instructions for that particular kit. Uh, so today, I'm more gonna focus on making sure that you understand where everything is uh, and how to identify particularly the different kinds of bricks but also mortars and insulation materials that we provide with the kit. So when you get it, you can just get straight into building it. When you're cutting through the plastic and if you're using a Stanley knife, just make sure you're really quite careful. So pull the plastic away from the pallet when you cut it just to avoid cutting through one of the bags of perlite or mortar or castable that's on the pallet behind the plastic um, because they're right there and if you just punch through and start cutting then you, you might make a bit of a mess. Uh, so just be careful when using your blade. Okay, so you can understand uh, sort of why we have to use such a large shipping crate to fit everything in because there's a significant amount of material in our wood-fired brick oven kits. So I'm actually gonna go through it in order of how it's built. 
Uh, so the first thing that we're going to look at is a calcium silicate board. Uh, so you've got a box of that there, so that sheets ready to be cut down using the templates that we're providing. Uh, once you've done that, you're going to be forming up to pour the subfloor heat bank. Okay, now that's going to be using the, the bags mark refractory castable. Okay, so uh, find your bags mark refractory castable and set them aside in one area so they don't get confused with any of the other bags. You're going to use the plastic formwork to run around the perimeter of the calcium silicate board to create the form necessary to pour that heat bank. Once that's set, you're going to start laying your fabric floor tiles. Now, uh, you you know see in the kit there's an awful lot of fire bricks uh, and it can be a little bit daunting when you're unpacking like oh, oh my goodness there's, there's just so many bricks here how do I figure out what goes where uh, the floor tiles are one of the easiest components to identify because they're all the same thickness of 50 millimeters or two inches uh, so this is one of them here uh, and so you see we've got that 50 mil thickness. So if you find all of your floor tiles and just put them all together in one area, that just makes your life easier when it comes to doing the build if you've got everything sorted into neat little piles. So now you're gonna lay your floor tiles on our hybrid mortar mixture uh, and you'll find a bag marked as such uh, in the kit. Now be aware that you will need to mix that with other materials. So you're gonna to need to mix that with general purpose Portland cement, lime and fine washed sand. Okay, and the ratios for the mix are printed on the bag, but they're also in the written instructions. So please be aware that those components, that those, the cement, the lime and the sand are not in the bag. They need to be added to it. Now, your floor tiles are laid, it's time to start building the oven. Now, before we get into the dome, I wanna just talk about the bricks that make up the front. So we have two arches. We have the entry arch, which is the one that punches into the dome itself. So that's the opening in the dome. And then we have the vent arch, which sits in front of that. And that's what you see behind me. Okay, so these are our vent arch columns here. All right, now all these bricks are already cut to size for you, ready for you to lay. Uh, and you'll see in the written instructions, we break down the, the different bricks that are in here, but up the top we have our springers, then you have your split brick, and then underneath these, I'm just gonna lift these off, you're gonna see a brick marked with a H, H for half, and then we have a brick here which we call the interlock. And this is the brick that actually locks into this little void here in the entry arch. So this is our entry arch, the one that punches into the dome, and we've actually cut the curve of the dome into the back face of these bricks so that you get this beautiful transition from the dome itself into the opening we actually have traced that curve and we've actually diamond ground uh, these bricks to follow the curve of the dome and so that's actually not something that we've ever really mentioned before but I think it's a real highlight of our kits is that we, we put an awful lot of effort in because we want to make these to the very best of our ability. So, these are your entry arch sets and they are marked, you'll have marks for, so R1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, and L1 to 5 as well. Uh, so that's these bricks here. Now, oh, one other thing I will mention just quickly, the interlock brick looks very, very similar to the entry arch brick, which is this one just here okay um, so you can see you can sort of understand how some people may get confused the interlock brick is a square brick it has no taper on it uh, so you look from above it's that same profile all the way through it doesn't taper at all the entry arch brick does taper tapers in this way okay so that's how you identify those if you do get confused just remember that So in order to actually lay uh, your, your columns, you're going to need some formwork to build around. So we have two pieces of formwork here. These come with each of our brick oven kits. You'll get the two sets of formwork. They're marked one and two. So the number one is for the entry arch. Uh, so you're going to see that that is a tiny bit lower and a little narrower than uh, this one. 
And number two is the vent arch. Uh, so that's gonna set your heights for all of your bricks, but it also gives you the profile to lay the arch over. Uh, so as I mentioned a moment ago, we've got our entry arch bricks. And they're gonna sit over this arch, just like that. Then we have our vent arch bricks. Now these ones are a little bit special. You're gonna find those in a cardboard box uh, with uh, cardboard all around them because we wanna do our very best to get these ones to you uh, without any damage because these are right on display. These are the ones right at the front of the oven that make up that arch. And so they're numbered one to nine. Uh, and when you lay them, you'll be laying them with the numbers facing towards you. And they are gonna sit on this formwork like so. And you're gonna use Use the formwork to support that arch while you're laying it. At the same time as you're putting together the entry and vent arches, you're also going to be building the dome. Uh, and for some people, they think, oh, geez, how, how am I going to lay this dome? Is, is that going to be complicated? And that's actually one of the funnest parts of the build because you get to use the trammel tool. Uh, so the trammel is a tool that pivots from the center of the floor. You'll find a, a tile brick uh, that has a C marked on two sides to help you identify it as the center. And it has a small hole drilled in the middle and that is to take the pin that comes out of the bottom of the trammel tool. So the trammel locks into that hole uh, and it will then pivot from that center point and help you position all of the bricks for the dome. Now, speaking of bricks for the dome, there are several types. Uh, and we talk uh, uh, about these in a lot of detail in the written instructions. Again, uh, and I will say this several times in this series, please make sure you read the written instructions. These videos are here to supplement the written instructions and give you a bit more of a visual guide of, of how to do things. But in order to get through the process and, and build the oven to a high level, you have to read those written instructions because there's lots of information contained in those instructions that's not in these videos. Uh, so, we have several different types of brick that make up the dome of the oven. Uh, so this is a type one brick. The type one brick is fairly easy to identify. Uh, from one face, it's a square. From another face, it's a rectangle. And then from the third face, it's a trapezoid. This is the majority of the bricks you'll have in your kit will be type ones. Type two bricks, uh, interesting because they actually look a little similar to a type one, but once you know what you're looking for, you'll be able to pick them really easily. So from one face, they'll be square. Uh, and you'll think, oh, I've, I've picked up a type one. From the side, they'll still have that taper, uh, just like a type one, exactly the same taper going in like this. But then if you look at the rectangular edge, where the, where the type one is a rectangle, the type two is trapezoidal. Uh, it has that taper. So it's actually tapered on two faces. Then you have type threes. Now type threes are probably the easiest to identify, particularly now that you understand what a type two looks like. Um, it's a relatively small brick and it's tapered in the same way as the type ones and type twos. It's still got the taper on the sides. And from the front, it's actually quite aggressively tapered. And these are the bricks you're gonna be using right up near the top of the dome to form those really tight rows. So what I would really recommend you do uh, when you're unpacking a kit, like I said before, separate things out into their types. Uh, so get all your type ones, make a stack. All your type twos, make a stack of those. Same with the type threes. Uh, and with the stagger bricks. Now, when you're unpacking the kit, you'll find a row of bricks that have sort of squiggle, sort of line, a wavy line drawn across the back of them. And that's how we identify the set of stagger bricks. Uh, we call them staggers because we use them to offset uh, the, the vertical joints as we're building the dome. There are two sizes of stagger. We have a large and we have a small. Uh, and they share one thing in common with all of our bricks for the dome. All the dome bricks all have that same taper. They taper in like this. Now, um, I probably don't need to say this, but I will say it anyway. Uh, make sure that the small end of the brick is pointed into the dome. Uh, so if you try and put the, the large end of the brick into the trammel tool, it will not sit properly. You'll, you'll figure that out very quickly. It's gonna be the small end of the brick is pointing into the dome. 
take you so far because of the nature of uh, the, the dome of the oven as you move up the dome the rows get steeper and steeper but the bricks want to fall in under their own weight uh, and so when you get up to about row 9 we're going to be recommending that you take the trammel tool out and you use the fiberglass dome that's provided uh, to build the last few rows of bricks on. Now that is uh, custom made by us in-house uh, and it actually also comes with a circular piece of plywood that you're going to use to support that dome uh, and stop it from moving around. So use your car jack to jack it up into place and you're going to build those last few rows of bricks on there and pour the keystone of the dome using the refractory castable that's provided. Uh, Alright, uh, so that's all of the bricks that make up the body of the oven, uh, which is excellent. So once you've built all of those, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is install the precast flue gallery. Okay, now the flue gallery uh, is made out of a reinforced refractory castable, uh, and this is what it's gonna look like. It comes to you in a light gray color. One thing I would like to point out is that it has a stainless steel ring around the flue. Underneath this, there's an expansion joint. Uh, which is to allow the flue to expand and contract as it heats and cools. If we didn't have that, the first time you use the oven, the fl that flue gallery would split in half because of the force of the expansion of the stainless steel. The next thing you're going to want to do is to insulate the dome of the oven. And for that, we're going to use the ceramic fiber blanket. Uh, now we provide enough in the kit to give you two full layers over the entire dome, which is a 50 millimeter thickness total, uh, and that's going to be plenty to keep the heat in the brickwork where you want it to be. Uh, now, in order to uh, install that, we've actually uh, given you some extras. Now, obviously, uh, we're going to recommend when you're handling the ceramic fiber blanket to wear gloves and safety glasses and good dust mask. You'll see that in the, the detailed instructions later on. Um, but it is quite itchy stuff, uh, and it, it, you do tend to sort of get it, uh, you know, touching, touching your arms. And so we thought it might be nice if we gave you some special gloves that you probably don't have at home. These are vet exam gloves that you can put on and they'll go all the way, all the way up your arm to your armpit uh, and just over your shoulder. And so we'll give you two of those as well. And that's just part of the kit because it's just a, I thought it would be a nice addition uh, just to make the process of building the oven that little bit more enjoyable because it is itchy stuff. Now, with the ceramic fiber blanket installed over the oven, we want to create a weatherproof strip around the perimeter of the oven to prevent water from wicking in underneath the edges of the render at the, once you've finished the build, the oven sitting out in the weather. We want to try and keep water from getting into the floor of the oven from the outside. So we provide you with a roll of aluminium strip uh, and a tube of a high temperature silicon that's actually custom made for sealing pizza ovens. Uh, so that's again all part of the kit and that's to try and keep the oven as dry as we can. Once that's installed, you'll then need to lash the blanket down. The ceramic fiber blanket will just be sort of sitting on the dome at that point and you want to tie it down. So you'll be using the large nails uh, and screws to firstly secure the strip around the perimeter of the oven and then you'll use the nails to act as hitching points or, or fixing points for lashing the tie wire and the chicken wire down over the blanket. Uh, and those things are, of course, all provided. All right, so insulation's on, the chicken wire's in place. Now you need to render the dome of the oven. The idea of that render is to, it basically gives you a shell over that blanket, which protects the blanket, but also provides some additional insulation of its own. Now, be aware, the ceramic fiber blanket is by far the superior insulation material. Uh, it has an insulation coefficient that's three times better than perlite concrete mix, uh, which is what you're going to be making. You'll get enough perlite in your kit to give you a 50 mil shell over the entire dome of the oven. Uh, now, technically, we could get away with a little less, but I like to think that maybe one day someone's going to stand on that dome. I don't know, for some reason, someone might decide to climb up on the oven. Maybe it's a kid. 
Who knows? Kids are crazy. Uh, but you may find that someone actually stands on it, and you can. When it's 50 mil thick, not a problem. You can stand on that dome, it's incredibly strong. So we tend to over-engineer everything that we do so that we know, regardless of what happens, hey, this, this oven's gonna stand the test of time. You're also gonna get in your kit a polystyrene float, okay? Uh, and so this might look a little bit boring, you might maybe confuse it with packaging material. Please don't throw it away. Uh, because it actually has a very special curve that's cut into the inside face here and that is a tool to help you render the dome of the oven. Uh, if you are rendering a flat surface you would get a flat float and use this to sort of polish the render to get it all flat. If you're not rendering a flat surface, you're rendering a dome, a curved surface, so you need a curved float and that's what we provide. It's all part of the kit as well. Right. So, now your oven is basically built. We also provide you with a flue and a cowling that's standard, it's part of all of our kits. Now, if you're in Australia, your kit will include a five litre tub of acrylic base coat roll-on render in white. And you have the option to purchase a spray can of high temperature paint for the flue gallery at the time of ordering. Please note we can't ship out the high temp paint on its own as it's classed as a combustible material and the couriers just won't ship it. If you're outside Australia, you'll be getting one of our export kits, which includes a five litre tub of acrylic base coat roll-on render in white and a spray can of high temp paint for the precast flue gallery in satin black. The last piece of the kit is your oven door. Uh, so this is made in stainless steel. Uh, it's then powder coated, so it's got that lovely black finish with solid hardwood timber handles, stainless steel ringlets just to to trim those handles and make it look good. And of course, it's got a temperature gauge as well. Now, the temperature gauge won't be fitted to the door when you receive it. That will be loose in the little bag of goodies that's part of the door box. Okay, now we do also have additional temperature gauges that you can order from us if you want to mount a gauge through the wall of the oven or maybe you want to have a remote capillary gauge or something like that. Check out our website, our online shop. We have all of that available for you as well. Now, please be aware, we put a huge amount of effort into packing these kits and to choosing bricks that are of the highest possible quality. Uh, but we do find that sometimes we'll get some little chips on corners of bricks, uh, and that's sort of par for the course. It, it does happen. You, you'll find that it won't affect every brick in your kit, but you may find there are some small chips, you know, about 10 millimeters or so, off the edge of a brick here and there. We're shipping out 800 kilos of solid brick uh, and even though we package it really carefully we do find that occasionally we'll get a chip here and there. If you do take your delivery and you find that something is significantly wrong and you're not happy with that let us know and we'll sort it out for you without a problem. Okay um, and wherever you are in the world doesn't matter we can still get a replacement out to you uh, relatively quickly. And hey, we're building an authentic brick oven here. Uh, so this is, is something that by its very nature, it's, it's a little bit rustic. And so you may find, you know, having a little chip here and there, it actually doesn't really make any difference in the end. So this is it. This is our D105 pre-cut brick oven kit. Uh, remember that the different kits, the D95, the D130, and some of our bigger kits uh, will look a little different, but they'll share very similar components. Uh, so this video will be more than enough to get you through identifying everything you need to build one of our pre-cut brick oven kits. Uh, so we hope you're looking forward to the rest of the series. Uh, we have a whole detailed series now, uh, start to finish of building the oven behind us. Uh, and so you'll see us take you through that step by step so you can watch the entire process from start to finish and see how and where we use each bit of material that's around me. Uh, so guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us.